With the sword and shield, the paladin protects and defends the party and makes it all look too easy. At least that's the goal, to get a comfort level with the paladin that makes it all look just plain easy. In truth, there's a lot going on and timing the right cooldown could save the whole run. My name's Brian and this is my beginner's guide to paladin. We're going to break down this video into kind of three categories. First, we're going to talk about stats and gear. Second, skill rotations and oaths and third, cooldowns and when to use them. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and we'll try to answer them as best we can. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. The Paladin's gear is that of the heavy armor, the sword and the shield like I mentioned, but you're a tank. You're going to be wearing full plate, high defense armor because obviously you're gonna be the one taking and hopefully blocking and mitigating the hits. Stats wise, we're gonna focus in on just three for Paladin. Vitality is going to be your main stats, thus giving you a base pool of HP and helps you obviously live longer because with a bigger pool, the more damage you can take. The bigger hits you can resist, the better you can be. Strength comes into play because that actually impacts your damage output. If you want to maximize your damage output, you need to maximize your strength. You can do this by slotting it as Matera into your gear. And don't worry if you don't have a high level crafter to do it, you can always go to a Matera NPC that's stationed out in the world to do it for you. You just need to have the Matera in your inventory. You can do this by purchasing it from the market boards, but if you take advantage of the adventure and need roulettes, it will be feeding you with an item that you can trade in for grade 6 Matera, which is the highest level Matera in the game. I wouldn't recommend using grade 6 for early on, but once you hit level cap, you should have plenty of opportunity by the time you hit level cap to have lots of Matera that you can utilize. Gear has a maximum allowable stat cap. So first try to maximize your strength, maximize your vitality, and then maximize any other stats that you feel are important like determination or critical hit. A stat that's hugely important for the tank is tenacity. This is going to increase both your attack and your defense. It cannot be stressed enough how awesome this stat is. This stat was introduced with Stormblood, kind of replacing the parry stat, and we're all the better for it. The Paladin gets two Oath abilities, and an Oath is going to act as your stance. You're going to be in Shield Oath, or you're going to be in Sword Oath. Shield Oath is going to reduce your damage taken by 20%, while at the same time reducing your damage dealt by 15%. This ability is learned at level 30, and this is considered your tank stance. It's going to help you build up more hate by just doing your natural rotations. If you find yourself after level 30 having a difficult time holding hate, make sure Shield Oath is on first. Sometimes, especially early on, you might forget to apply it, and thus you're going to be losing hate really quickly as all the other jobs catch up and are able to output more damage. So this is a huge help, and usually recommended at the start of any pool or any boss fight. Then at level 35, you're going to learn Sword Oath. This deals additional damage with a potency of 75 after each auto attack, and your damage is affected by your weapon delay. This is generally considered your damage dealing stance. And then once you hit level 52, you learn a trait called Oath Mastery, which is going to increase your Oath Gauge by 5 each time an auto attack lands with Sword Oath, or each time an attack is blocked while under the effect of Shield Oath. Your Oath Gauge is used to execute certain actions later in the game, and depending on what stance you're in, it's going to affect how fast your Oath Gauge fills up. Now, as a Paladin, I find that there's two basic openers that I like to employ. The early game opener, and then the after 50 opener. For the early game, before you're at level 50, I traditionally like to pull with Shield Lob and flash at least twice when the enemies have surrounded me. From there, I'm gonna go into my hate building rotation, which is usually focusing on just one enemy unless the party is kind of spread out across all the different mobs. And at that point, I might flash a little bit more as necessary in case I start to lose hate on any particular target. Now for level 15 above content, I like to shield lob, flash, circle of scorn, followed by another flash. This gives me a great head start on all the targets once they've surrounded me. And it's important to make sure that you're not flashing and using circle of scorn before that has happened. Shield lob should give you plenty of a head start on all the targets, so you should be good to go. The game offers you two ways to see where your hate is currently located. You're going to have the enemy list where you're going to see all the targets, and as long as you're red on each of those little icons, that means the enemy is focusing in on you. However, if you want to see where you stand individually target by target, with the target selected, you can see within your party list the letter A and then various numbers, and this is going to show you your ranking on that target in the hate list. Now, with that out of the way, let's talk about your different rotations. Paladins have a hate building rotation, a dot rotation, 
a damage rotation, a magic rotation, and a healing rotation. That's a lot of rotations that we're going to cover here right now. So let's first go ahead and start with your hate building rotation. Your hate building rotation starts with Fast Blade, followed by Savage Blade, and finished off with Rage of Alone. The combo potencies of these abilities all brought together is going to give you 640 potency over the course of roughly 7 seconds. And that's how long it's going to take with your global cooldown to execute all three abilities. This is your hate building rotation because each step along the way, Savage Blade and Rage of Alone are going to increase the hate in which it is applied to your target. And thus it's going to keep your target focused in on you. Your dot rotation, it goes Fast Blade, Riot Blade, and then Goring Blade. All in all, this rotation is going to give you a 650 potency over the course of 7 seconds. But with that dot applied, it's also going to add an additional 420 potency over the next 21 seconds. This will allow you to shift into your damage rotation of Royal Authority. So that goes Fast Blade, Riot Blade, and then Royal Authority. That's going to feed you a potency of 760 over the course of 7 seconds, which is those abilities executed while including time for your global cooldown. So those are your single target rotations, Hate, Dot, and Damage. With Stormblood, Paladin got a new ability that is learned at level 46 called Total Eclipse. This is now your AoE ability, and it's not focusing on tanking, it's actually focusing in on damage. So it has a potency of 110 to all nearby enemies. There is no damage fall off like in some AoE ability jobs, so this can be really quite powerful. Now with 110 potency, you need to do a little bit of math of when it makes the most sense. Personally, I recommend always trying to pair this up with fight or flight because you're going to get that additional 25% boost to that potency. But from a simple math perspective, because at least with four targets, that's 440 potency for every time you use that ability. If you factor that over the course of a regular cycle cooldown, you're obviously having more potency being put out per second. But in the end, I'll leave it up to you. It's okay to use it with three. Four is really where we're going to see the, the best potency boost. And, then, and regardless, pairing that with fight or flight and that additional 25% damage bonus feels fantastic. I love this new ability. It is a game changer for Paladin, and I really hope you enjoy it too. So Paladins have a magic rotation, and it's really quite simple in this regard. At level 64, Paladins learn a spell called Holy Spirit. This has a potency of 400, and it's also going to increase your Oath Gauge by 20 if Shield Oath is active. The reason why I call this a rotation is that you also have an ability at level 68 called Requisite. This delivers an attack with a potency of 350, but the potency of this ability decreases as your own MP decreases, and this is also on a 60 second recast. The reason why I call this a rotation again is the additional effect of this ability is going to increase your attack magic and healing magic potency by 20% if your MP is over 80%. So if your MP is over 80%, use Requisite to get that additional 20% boost and then use Holy Spirit. This then makes your Holy Spirit ability have a potency of 480. The reason this is also quite powerful is that let's say as a paladin you're running short of TP, you can easily switch into this type of rotation to allow your TP to take a rest and heal back up while you're utilizing your MP. Regardless, I'd recommend using Requisite anytime it's off a cooldown. I also said paladins have a healing rotation, and this is true. Again, if you pair it with Requisite, you're going to get that 20% additional boost, but paladins have a spell called Clemency, which is learned at level 58. This has a cure potency of 1200, and if you're curing somebody in your own party, you're going to receive 50% back to your own HP pool. This can be really handy. It's kind of like two for one in that regards. You can also pair this up with Divine Veil and heal yourself and apply a shield to others. So you have a lot of power here as a paladin to be able to do damage mitigation and healing. So take that into account and don't be afraid to use Clemency. So we covered our rotations from hate to dot to damage to magic and healing. So now let's go ahead and talk about our cooldowns and when it might be best to use them. Now the Paladin has a lot of cooldowns, with the majority of them focusing in on damage mitigation. The first one I'm going to talk about is actually a cross roll ability, Rampart. This is going to reduce damage taken by 20% and it's on a 90 second cooldown. You're going to learn this as part of your cross roll at level 8. At level 38, Paladin's going to learn the ability Sentinel. This has a recast of 180 seconds 
but it's going to reduce your damage taken by 40 percent this is a huge damage mitigator it's generally it's going to be considered kind of your tank buster so when you run into content that's going to hit you real hard this is what you want to save for those real hard hits Bulwark is a level 46 ability, and this is going to increase your block rate by 60%. This also is 180 second recast time, just like Sentinel, and when paired up together, you're getting both the damage mitigation of 40% and also increasing your ability to block. And block, in and of itself, is its own damage mitigation. Now we have Hollowed Ground. This has a 420 second recast, but it's going to render you impervious to most attacks. This is your Ono oh Moment ability. But at the same time, if you find yourself running content and not having any issues with it with your group, you can feel free to pop this in any time and give your healers a break. Cover is your job defining ability. It really makes you feel like a paladin. It's going to have you take all damage intended for another party member, and it's going to last for 12 seconds. In the later half of the game, you're gonna learn a trait that's going to enhance cover, making it to where you only take 80% of the damage intended. But even still, it's fantastic. It's a lifesaver ability. I would always recommend using this and covering your healers, especially in raid-wide content. This should help keep them alive, which can keep you alive and the rest of the group alive. However, if you see somebody struggling with life and you know that a raid-wide attack is coming, use this on them, protect them, keep them up. It's going to help your healers. It's going to help you. It's going to help your team. Tempered Will is a twofold ability. It's going to cure blind and heavy effects that are on you, but it's also going to prevent knockback and draw in effects. This is really handy on any fight that you could find yourself falling off or getting knocked off, so just keep that in mind. It's on 180 second recast time, and it's one of those abilities that can be easily forgotten about if not put into practice. Sheltron is this fantastic blocking ability. It's going to ensure that you block the next attack while at the same time restoring MP upon that block. It's going to last for 10 seconds, but it's going to use 50 points of your Oath Gauge. Your Oath Gauge holds 100 points, so you can be able to save it up and be able to use this back to back, or you can just use it whenever it comes up. They will highlight this when it is usable, so it is tempting to use it. So just keep in mind when it's the right time to use Sheltron and when's not. If you're just generally doing big pulls, if you're just generally running and you don't need it for any particular mechanic, just use this whenever it comes up. So Divine Veil. Upon HP recovery via healing magic cast by yourself or another party member, a protective barrier is going to be cast on all party members within a range of 15 yawns. This is going to last for 30 seconds. Now the barrier effect is going to prevent damage up to 10% your maximum HP. This is where that vitality comes in. So doing some simple math, if you had 45,000 HP and you applied this, this is going to put a 4,500 shield on any target within 15 yams of you. And that shield's gonna last for 30 seconds. So it's more damage mitigation, not just to you, but to your whole party. This is on 120 second recast time, but I'd recommend trying to use this whenever it comes available, unless content and mechanics dictate otherwise. Now we have Passage of Arms, the level 70 ability that's going to increase your block rate by 100% and create a cone barrier behind you that's going to nullify 15% of the damage inflicted on anybody who's standing in that area. This ability not only is awesome, it looks awesome. You plant your sword in the ground, you lift your shield, and it creates these giant angel wings behind you that is just not to be missed. It's got a 120 second recast time, just like Divine Veil. Feel free to use this as much and often as possible. It's perfect for various mechanics, but I would also recommend because of its short recast time, use this for any stacking mechanics, any group stacking mechanics. This is gonna to continue to help you reduce damage out there for your group, and I highly recommend using it as much and often as possible. Hopefully this video has helped equip you with the understanding of what it takes to be a paladin in the world of Final Fantasy XIV. My name's Brian, and this is Work to Game. Thanks so much for watching this video, and we hope to see you on our next. But until then, we hope you have a fantastic week. Take care. Hey everybody, Brian and Chuck here for Work to Game. Chuck wants to tell you that you should totally subscribe to the channel and that you should totally hit that like button. Oh, and then we also got t-shirts on sale for some reason. That's a little bit mean, Chuck. I'm not crazy. <laughs>